In this video, we are going to prove that the area under standard normal distribution, which is precisely this curve, and this curve is represented by y equals to 1 over square root of 2 pi times e to the negative x squared over 2, and this curve is from iCraftis in Desmos.com. And let me continue my previous sentence. We want to prove that the area under this curve is equal to exactly 1. So you, you want to prove that all of this, all of this area underneath the curve is 1. And why do we want to prove that? Well, if the entire area under the curve is 1, it's very easy to figure out the relative, the relative area of, of anything like within the curve. Let's say we want to figure out what is the probability of landing in between negative 1 and 1. In that case, between z score of negative 1 and 1, our area, whatever this comes out to be, is going to be the probability of our z score being in between negative 1 and 1 is exactly going to be the area because you're going to divide this by 1, which is the same thing as a. If the area under the standard normal distribution was 2, then you're going to have to divide the area by 2, and that can be a bit messy. So we want to prove that it comes out nicely, it is precisely 1. And the standard normal distribution is represented by this equation, y equals to 1 over square root of 2 pi times e to the negative x squared over 2 because it is a normal distribution with, with mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. And what we are going to do, we wish to prove that the integral or the area under the curve from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity so of this curve, 1 over square root of 2 pi times e to the negative x squared over 2 dx is equal to 1. So how can we do it? Well, we can get 1 over square root of 2 pi outside the integral because that's a constant. So let's do that. Times integral, this crazy integral of e to the negative x squared over 2 dx is 1. So what we essentially want to prove is that this crazy integral, integral from negative infinity to infinity, of e to the negative x squared over 2 is equal to square root of 2 pi. So if we can somehow prove this, then we know the entire thing is equal to 1. So how can we? So the first thing you may say is, why can we try to find uh, try to find the indefinite integral, the entire derivative of e to the negative x squared over 2 dx. And it turns out this thing is not an elementary function, not elementary. And what do I mean by that? It means it cannot be represented by polynomial, rational, trig, uh, trig function, inverse trig function, logarithmic exponential, and almost every function that we humans have came up with. So this thing is going to be very difficult to integrate by, uh, with, by getting one function. So you may say, then how can we evaluate this? And that's when a very intelligent, very creative idea comes in. So what we are going to do, we are going to, let me rewrite that, integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to negative x squared over 2 dx. Let's let this be area, and we want to find what area is. And you may say, hmm, can we replace x with y? What do I mean by that? Instead of e to negative x squared over 2, can we write e to negative y squared over 2 dy? And my answer is going to be absolutely so, because uh, when you, the x is just, just just representing some variable that we're going over. If we're changing both of them, we're just doing the same thing. We're just replacing x with y. We're not essentially changing the area or we're not essentially changing the equation because, because we can think of this function as staying the same. e to e negative x squared over 2 and e to e negative y squared over 2 are the same when this thing is equal to, let's say, some some alpha and this thing can also equal to some alpha. So, so let's continue this process. And you may say, what is the point of this? And I may say, hmm, if we can have x squared plus y squared, we can change that to r squared and convert to polar. And is there a way to get x squared plus y squared? And the answer is yes. By multiplying these two expressions, so a squared is going to be integral from negative infinity to infinity of, now we're going to multiply these two. Remember, if you have two, two integral, and one is just function of x and one is function of y, and you're multiplying them out, you can combine them. You can combine them as one, as a one double integral of the product, of the product of these two functions. So we can multiply this out. So we can let first one be dy and next one be dx. 
So we have a squared is equal to this expression. And you know this thing is equal to integral from negative infinity to infinity, integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to d. We can add this up because you're by using the property of exponent. It's, it's going to be negative one half times x squared plus y squared dy dx. Now let's convert to polar and a magical thing is going to happen because when you convert to polar, you have extra r coming out of it. And since you have r squared in the exponent, you can use u substitution to actually simplify and evaluate this expression. And let me show you. So let's change it to polar. So this thing is going to be our theta, our theta. Now what, what are we representing? We're representing this thing is x, this thing is y. We're trying to represent the entire plane, the entire two-dimensional Cartesian plane. So our r, our r is going to extend from zero to infinity. And our theta, our theta is going to spin around from zero to two pi. So our theta is going to go from zero to two pi. Our r, our r is going to go from 0 to infinity, and we have inside e to the negative 1 f r squared, and when you change to, when you convert to polar coordinates, dy dx or dx dy changes to r dr d data, and now we are very close to being done, very close. Now you can separate this out, integral from 0 to 2 pi of d data, times integral from 0 to the infinity of e to the negative 1 f r squared r dr. The first part is obviously going to be 2 pi. The second part is going to be, second part is going to be, when you, when you try to integrate this expression, you are going to get negative 2 e to the negative 1 f r squared. So, so, uh, is it negative 2? Seems like it. Yes, it is. No, no, it's not. It's just negative. My, my bad. It's just negative e to the negative 1 f r squared. I may want to show work. In this case, we want to use u of negative 1 f r squared. So du is going to be negative r dr. So yes, we want negative 1 to stand out front. And you're going from 0 to infinity. Plugging infinity <laughs> theoretically into the equation gets you e to the negative something, negative infinity, which is practically 0, minus e, minus negative 1. Because when you, when you plug it in, you get uh, negative 1 f times 0, which is the same thing as 0, e to the 0 power is 1. So this thing is 2 pi. So we just showed, we just showed the square of the area is equal to, this thing is equal to 2 pi. And that's telling us the area is square root of 2 pi. So let's go back to this. We know this expression is equal to square root of 2 pi. So our area under the curve is 1 over square root of 2 pi times square root of 2 pi or 1. So we have it. Area under the standard normal distribution curve is 